Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at diagnosing a <clears throat> flow meter on your bottoms up system that is obstructed or blocked and it's causing the line to not work properly. So, uh, the best way to look at this scenario and diagnose the problem would be in operation like normal, uh, be in auto start or pour mode on the new boards. Got our size programmed here, two red lights like normal. We go to work and just a little bit comes out when we get these red flashing lights. So there we go, still nothing. Sometimes it'll do that a couple times and then say that you twist something and try it again and it'll pour like normal. But we see here, nothing's happening. So we hear the valve openings, we've got liquid coming out. So we know that our cup sensor is reading fine because liquid is coming out. We can also check the cup sensor going into prime mode, just pushing down. So we know it's not a cup sensor, so we're getting a good reading here. So for some reason there is an issue somewhere. So best way to look at uh, looking at the problem to be a flow meter is let's unscrew the cup coupler here. We're still in prime mode, and that's fine. So what you wanna do is you wanna reach underneath the dispenser and when you're underneath the dispenser, we've got our most of our valve assembly here. You're going to be, uh, so the valve is, say, facing this way if you were to look at it. On the back side here is this little spring loaded black connector. You just want to put your index finger on that. So we're going to manually open the valve by pressing that way. Let's see if liquid comes out. Okay, so yeah, so that's working just fine. It's kind of hard to tell, but this plunger head here seems like it's obstructed a little bit. So it needs a way to kind of tell the difference is just by going to another valve. So I'm gonna mess with this one over here. There's no liquid in it, but it presses down just fine. And it's got a pretty significant yeah, that plunger head drops down pretty good. It feels like it's pretty smooth. This one definitely feels like it's kind of stuck and won't go down as far. So something is definitely blocking it. And another easy way to tell that you're having a flow meter issue is back here in prime mode. Push this down. So I'm going to hit the start stop button and we should have lights that circle around here as liquid comes out, if liquid comes out. So there we go. So, oh, but now there's nothing. So what that means, looking back on the inside of our valve assembly here, we've got this white piece in here. I'll pull this off. This white piece in here, that is our flow meter. And so as liquid comes through, it's uh, it's just free to move in there. But, so I'll move the plunger head just so you get an idea. That flow meter spins around as liquid comes up through and it is read by our flow sensor here. And we're looking for the lights that flash around here as liquid comes through to see that all of our sensors are, are reading. So just on that last run through, was it happening or it's happening sporadically yes just right there nothing's going on so that means that our flow meter isn't spinning the lights aren't working around so there's something inside there that we need to figure out well first we need to open up the valve assembly from the bottom and we need to take a look inside at what's happening since we're going to be taking apart the valve assembly it's important that we purge out all the liquid and pressure that's still in the line. So <clears throat> since there's something sort of obstructing the flow meter in here and the plunger head, uh, what I did was, this is running a long draw system, meaning I have an empty keg detector and a separate walk-in cooler. The lines are then run to the bar. Um, all I did was just put it in prime mode. I took the cup coupler off and just push down on the plunger head a little bit like that and blow off all the liquid and then gas was still coming in from there. Our beer pump is clicking so I turn off the pressure to the 
beer pump, came back and bled up any excess pressure. pressure. So that was on a long draw system. If you are running from a uh, kegerator unit or a micromatic keg cooler, all you'll need to do is untap your keg and again, just press on, down on the plunger head or you could reach underneath and pressing on that sliding linkage piece, open the plunger head that way. So there's no pressure. So now we're good to look underneath and start opening up the bottom of the valve assembly and take a look at what's inside this line. So this is the underside of the dispenser looking at the line that was causing an issue. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the tools that you're going to need and, the, and some parts you'll need most importantly. So before you do any work, you're going to make sure that you have an extra diaphragm. It's this little rubber guy here. This is what sits on the plunger head inside. And when you take apart this whole assembly, uh, you need to swap them out because it'll sort of break the seal as it were. So make sure you have some extra diaphragms on place. Give us a call if you need some. And you're also going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. So there are four screws uh, in this corners of the bottom block you'll be unscrewing. And then you can either take some needle nose pliers to take out this little, there's a couple of these little, there you go, a couple of these little clips there. Or if you have a small Phillips or not Phillips, excuse me, flathead screwdriver, you can just pop them out that way. And sometimes they kind of go flying, so make sure you have a couple extras on hand if you need them. All right, so we're doing a little closer view here. So I'm gonna use my flathead screwdriver. There's just some little grooves on that clip. Let's see if you see that pop out just like that. that clip and that clip is connected to this linkage piece just like that so now that we've got those out of the way let's do this let's take our Phillips screwdriver Screw the four corners. There we go. So the four screws are out. And then you just take a hold of this assembly and that'll just hang down like that. Okay, so here we are looking at our uh, brass block here. This is the bottom of our plunger head. And we've got another little clip here with a washer and then our diaphragm this rubber part here. So again, I'm just going to take my small flathead screwdriver here, pop out the clip, a little bit of water is held in there in place, take the washer out, and it looks like I found the source was obstructing our flow meter. So let me rotate this just a little bit. There is a little metal piece right here, a little round disc. And so that was sitting in between the diaphragm here and that flow meter. So we've at least addressed what this problem was. That's what was getting stuck in there. Um, occasionally, after using Oh, you know, different IPAs or slushy beers or any of the hazy stuff, you can get some sediment, some uh, hot, hot bits, especially, especially after IPAs, could, could get in there and block this. But the main issue here has been this, what we call a shim. And I'll speak a little bit about what that shim is and uh, what could be causing that to get stuck in there as well. Um, but now that we, this is popped down, we need to take off this old diaphragm. There we go. And we need to replace it with a new one. Since we're already here, might as well do it. Just make sure the nipple on this is sticking up. Push up like that. And see how it's kind of umbrellaed up like this. We'll make sure it's pulled back down. And there's a little notch right in the center of that plunger head. And the diaphragm 
sits in. Make sure it's in there. Yep, snug in place. So now we can just reattach the washer. And you can see there's a little groove right below that washer, and that's where this clip is gonna go back in. And that can be a real tricky one to get. There we go, back in place. So now we can put our bottom block back into place and put the four screws back in. So I took off the bottom block assembly here. Uh, the end of the solenoid has this little three pin connector that connects on the circuit board. So if you need to pop it out of, out of your way, you definitely can. Just make sure to plug it back in. And then there are, you can see these little notches here that lines up with the brass block insulation. So that's nice and seated there. And now you can just get your four screws started. Let's see how I can do this here. So I always start in the back corner. Sometimes you can get it seated and just kind of finger tight. Get that screw at least in place a little bit. So you can do it one handed. There we go. Okay, so once your fourth and last screw is in there, just go ahead and snug up the other ones. If your screws are not tight enough, or if your connection or seating is not good enough, you'll know pretty quickly when you reattach a keg and there's still stuff dripping out. So that's back in. We just need to apply, reapply the linkage log back underneath there. And put our final clip in the bottom there. Now we're good. I'm just pressing on that now, and it feels way smoother. So we definitely know that that little shim is causing the issue. Okay, so we've replaced the whole bottom block assembly, or in the, the plunger head assembly, with a new diaphragm. And so now we want to talk about what this shim is, why it was in there. And to do that, we'll talk about our cup coupler here for a little bit. So our cup coupler assembly involves this slider magnet, which the cup sits on. Um, this whole component in the middle here is our nozzle post. And here is the nozzle post, just kind of in raw form without any gaskets or anything around it. And so on the underside, you see it, it looks like that. And there's kind of a, if you look through this little guy here, there's a good little gap between the bottom of this top portion and the very top here, which is also a magnet. And so in our assembly, if you will, we put that shim, so if we're looking in here again, you see how it's a smaller gap to the bottom up there? So we're looking through this little section here yeah, so we use that shim, uh, put an adhesive on it, and put it up there to help prevent any corrosion of the magnet there. But over time, especially if cup couplers, and this is an old model here, being soaked continually in a sanitizer solution or a cleaner or a cleaning solution at over time, all that adhesive will start to break down and you can see on the underside of this slider magnet here, how gross that one is. And so if that's happening, and we don't recommend soaking the cup couplers at all, you can give them a quick dunk 
after I rinse, put them in some sanitizer solution real quick, just for a quick dunk. I then let them air dry. I just kind of leave them upside down on the tray over there. Uh, but if you're soaking them, that's the breaking down process will happen. And then that shim is what will, as the valve is open, that little shim pops loose, slides right down in there and causes that blockage. Now it's not a very common event, uh, but it can happen again if over time you get some wear and tear looking like that. Problem has been diagnosed. We've replaced the diaphragm on the underside. Now let's just make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to. So we need to send liquid back up through the lines as we emptied it out. Let's go into prime or purge mode. Four lights here, normal. Push down, cup sensor's working okay. We got those four lights. Let's do this. There we go. So we got all the lights are flashing around here. And those lights tell us that the flow meter is spinning freely inside uh, the assembly around the plunger head. So we got liquid in there. So let's just do another test. Auto start. We're rocking just fine here. There we go, another part of pint. So that is how you can test to see if your flow meter is obstructed and how to take a look inside of what's causing the issue. Now it's important to note that Yes, sometimes those shims occur, um, but again, if you're using any sort of uh, beer that um, has a lot of sediment in it, uh, is extra hoppy or you know wet hopped beer, you can get some actual hop chunks in there. Um, that could potentially block up the flow meter as well. And a good way to prevent any of this sort of thing happening is to uh, clean your clean your lines regularly and to change out the diaphragm once a year or so to make sure everything's in good working condition.